sustain, nutrition, job. What we're we talking about? Tracking your progress. <whistles> if you don't keep the score, you're never going to win. You can't imagine them getting to the end of the football season. Obviously, massively knowledgeable about football. <laughs> Here we go. Without them tracking any kind of point system, you're never going to know who wins. You just be like, I think. Oh, uh, no, I won more games. Yeah, I think this team won, but I'm not entirely sure. Or oh, tracking your progress is just all data. It's looking at what's working well and what's not working well. Again, going back to the football thing. If you don't know what's working well, if you don't know which team or which players are playing the best, then you're never going to be able to adjust anything to start getting the results that you want. The big thing that we can take from this is that when you weigh in, you just need to take the emotion out of it. Because what people do is they weigh in, whether it's gone up, down, backwards or sideways, whatever it may have done, is they get really frustrated by it. And what you need to do is you need to step on the scales or whatever your barometer is and just shrug your shoulders and crack on. Because whether it's gone up or it's gone down, what you need to do is the same. You need to eat well consistently, you need to exercise hard, you need to moderate your high calorie treats. Whether you've lost or gained, you just need to keep doing the right things and focus on what you need to do to lose weight. Because eventually, if you keep going, then you will do. If you sack it off and eat a load of chocolate, you're probably not going to. Sometimes you just need to take a step back. Look at the bigger picture. Look at your weight over the terms of the month, over two months, over six weeks, or whatever it is, as opposed to looking at it day to day or week to week. Again, you've said this a million times, track the progress. So look at it over a longer period of time and look for the trend as what your weight's doing. There's loads of different ways to measure progress. So we're just gonna run through them now and then all of them are gonna have their drawbacks. You know? Number one, scales. Oh, the bane <laughs> of our lives is that there's so many things that can influence this and it is a great measure of progress. If you have four stone of body fat to lose, then you are gonna see a drop in the scales, but not every week and not linearly. You know, there's gonna be times it goes up, there's gonna be times it stays the same. So just take it with a pinch of salt. If it drops one week, then great. If it doesn't one week, then persevere. So say Manchester United win the Premier League. They're not going to have won every single game, but they're going to win more games than they lose. That's how you win. So if you weigh in lighter more times than you weigh in heavier, you're going to get lighter. Two measurements. It's really easy to do. The only issue you've got is slight variation. And again, bloat and things like that can kind of throw the numbers off, but it's going to give you a pretty good representation like the scales. Three photos. Again, there's gonna be pros and cons. Over the course of like two or three pounds, you're not gonna see much of a difference, but as you lose, then you'll see a bigger change in the way that your body looks. Your goals to look better, not just to be lighter. Four, how your clothes feel. Pretty much the same as inches, but there's gonna be less variation in regards to getting the measurement size wrong. You know, sometimes people say, I've gained three inches on my stomach, but lost four of my glutes. You've done one of them wrong. Look at them across a broad spectrum. We use four different metrics because they're all saying something quite different, but put them all together and you'll get a good idea of what is actually going on.